All right, last time we looked at correlation coefficients to determine if there really may be linear correlation. This time, if there is linear correlation, then we would want to probably calculate the regression equation. Uh, so that's what this lesson is about. And we're going to revisit some of our previous examples about that chocolate and the Nobel because we've done so much on that. It's easier to continue than it is to start over. So if we have a collection of paired sample data, the regression line, sometimes called the line of best fit or the least squares line, usually if you've been introduced to it in an earlier grade, you just kind of visually try to get a line that's as close to it kind of goes through the pack of dots with a kind of a balance above and below, but we're going to be doing it more precisely. The formulas that are used to do it has to do with minimizing the distances, and that's where this least squares line comes in. But we're not going to use the formula. We're going to use, get to use technology. So there's an equation, y hat equals b sub 0 plus b sub 1x. Now that's a lot like what you've done in algebra with y equals mx plus b. And if we were going to graph y equals mx plus b, we would start on the y-axis with b. And the fact that this is where you start is why this is b sub zero. But the order here is different. We've got that intercept listed first. And then really what is the slope is the second thing listed because the slope is the value in front of x. So b sub 1 here would be equivalent to the slope. So this is your relationship between x. Now x is really what we refer to it a lot in algebra. But in statistics, that gets another name in general. So that x value is the explanatory variable or the predictor variable or the independent variable. And then y hat is your response variable, which is dependent. This, whatever you get for y, depends on what you put in for x, and x was independent. This is exactly what I just showed you on the previous screen. However, there is a corresponding terminology over here in the population. So again, we get our Greek letter. This Greek letter is beta. However, the beta goes with the population. So again, beta starts with a B, so you can see where we're going to relate it to B, but our normal letter B is from the sample. Our Greek letter beta come, is for the population parameters. So just kind of note the difference between those two. Also, if it's from a sample, we have y hat, where if it's from the population, it's just y. The requirements are exactly the same as they were when we wanted to determine if there were any correlation, linear correlation. So there's no difference here. You've got to have a random sample. Then you need to look at the scatter plot. And again, research level statisticians are doing a little bit something more involved, but we just want to look at it and make sure that they kind of look like they're headed up in a straight line pattern. And there's not any outliers. Or if there are outliers, we have to make sure if, if possible, we take out any that we are just certain are errors, okay? And consider what difference the ones with the errors make. Like maybe do it without that point and then do it again with the point and see how much it's affecting things. So this, again, is the same information we had on our previous lesson about the 22 pairings between the chocolate consumption and the Nobel, I think it was nominees or whatever, but and this is the same scatter plot. So as before, we're not sure that this is randomly selected, so maybe these aren't valid, but we can still calculate things even if they're not valid. You just have to kind of be aware of that, but right now we're wanting to practice the calculation. We do kind of see a straight line pattern. It looks like the more the more as x goes up, y goes up, so we have this straight line pattern. And there's not any real outliers. These two points are the most questionable, but they're kind of balanced out to undo each other since one's below and one's above. That's kind of helpful in the balance, okay? It's kind of like if you took a test and you were looking at the mean of what's going on in the class, one person aces it and another person totally fails it. Well, the class average may still be well represented, even if we have those balanced exceptions. 
the same requirements we had before. Last time we did the linear regression test, but last time we were looking at p-values and the r-value that's on the second screen. But what we're going to look at this time is simply other information from the exact same test. Even though they don't have B sub 0 and B sub 1, notice they have a form up here for the equation. And they say, okay, if the equation is this in this form, then A is, and you go down to the bottom here, and we say negative 3.157. You see out here to the right that I've put negative 3.16. B is our slope, essentially, for this one, which would be like B sub 1. And then I go down here and it tells me what B is. So, wow, that's the exact same test we've done last time. Same place, just different information. So we get to put that one in. Now, this is an estimate of the true regression equation for the entire population because this is the regression equation for the sample. If we took a different sample, we would get slightly different values here. So we would have a different sample regression equation. So this one's an estimate, but we know that it's not perfect. You can find the regression equation with StatCrunch. So why do you want to know that? I know sometimes I don't tell you anything about StatCrunch, but on this homework, there's a lot of times a little, you know, that little box beside all of your data that you can click to open in StatCrunch. And then when you click open in StatCrunch, it will automatically import all the numbers there. You can choose the option stat at the top, go to regression, and simple linear. After you click that, you get a lot of options that come up on your next screen, but you don't need to adjust them all. You do need, however, to pick the X and the Y. So you're going to do a drop down here, and it'll be like, see how these columns are labeled VAR 6, VAR 7? You're going to pick VAR 1 and then VAR 2. Or if they happen to have a title that got imported, you can pick the first title for your X and pick the second title for your Y. But those are the only two things on that screen that you need to adjust for this particular feature. Then you can click Compute. And when you do that, you will get a results page uh, that tells you the information. And it's going to give you the same kind of information. So here, back to what I'm doing with my calculator, I've already got all of those dots graphed. If I want to graph the regression equation of y hat, I just go to y equals. When I click y equals, I get a place where I can type in that equation. Now my plot one is dark, that's because I have stat plot on. And the stat plot is what's putting all these little dots on there. Then I type in my regression equation and then I hit graph. So y equals, type it in, make sure your plot one is on, and then, then that right hand button on your calculator at the top is graph. When I graph it, it, it graphs that equation. So now we can see that it does fit the points well. So what does it mean when it fits the points well? It kind of means that that line is shooting through the middle of the herd. Okay, if you had a regression line that went up here and it started in the points, but then it missed tons of, you know, it didn't even go through them, then it wouldn't fit it well. So this one does fit it well. We've got some points above and points below. It doesn't have to hit them all. You want to just be as close as possible to all of them. So it's like shooting through the middle of the herd. However, those points are not all very close to the line. So what we would say here is that it does have that positive correlation, but this is only moderately strong. So that would be really close to the line if it was a really strong regression. You're also going to have to predict values of y. And there is a linear correlation. We've already looked at that in the last uh, class period. But the third thing you want to do is make sure your prediction is not very far beyond the scope of the data. So what does that mean? That means let's back up a couple of slides to where we actually had our data listed here. On this data, 
you would not want to make a prediction for something that went way past your largest X value. So I think the largest X value on here, see this one looks like it's 11.6. This one's 11.9. So you would not want to go far out way past 12. I mean, you could go a little bit, maybe 15, but if you started trying to predict what's going to happen, if the chocolate value was 50, that's pretty far out there. So you don't want to go too far past the data you've actually collected. If you're going in between values, it's fine, but you just don't want to go way past your values. So let's go back and look at this chart again. So we have to check that. Now, if all of this indicates that it's a good model, then you take your equation and you just take the X they're asking you to predict about and plug it in and just do the math. And if it's no, don't use the regression equation. And you're going to have some homework things where you should not use the regression equation, even though it asks you to predict it. So if you can't use the regression equation because it wasn't a good model or it was way beyond the scope or anything like that, but you still need to make a prediction, then you want to use the mean of the y values. So you would find the arithmetic mean of all the y values. So let's look at making a prediction. If we were going to use that same data to predict the Nobel rate for a country that had a chocolate consumption of 10 kilos per capita per year, is the regression model a good model? That's that last thing that we were just looking at. The ultimate answer there is yes. We've already said that it fits the points pretty well. And in our last lesson, we looked at the R value, which did indicate a linear correlation. Now, the prediction is not beyond the scope at all. The prediction is actually within the scope, not beyond the scope. So when we look at that third thing, that third check doesn't really apply because we're going in between some values we know. So this means we can use our regression equation, which we've already calculated, and all we need to do is plug a 10 in here for x and do negative 3.37 plus 2.49 times 10. And that is going to give me my prediction that they would get 21.5 Nobel laureates per 10 million people. So since it was a good model, we were just able to plug it in. This is exactly what one of your homework questions kind of looks like, and it's not an example of all of them, but it's just to show you. So you can see here that there, it's talking about how many bug chirps, like crickets or something, per minute at different temperatures. And uh, there are people that can almost determine the temperature by listening to the crickets chirp. And this is a real thing. Find the best predicted temperature for a time when bug chirping is at the rate of 3,000 chirps per minute use a significance level of 0.05. Well, if you were working on your homework, you would want to, first of all, click right here. And what that's going to do is bring up a menu where you can open it in StatCrunch. Now, you wouldn't have to do this in StatCrunch. Again, you could retype the values into your calculator. That's not way too many values. But since you have the option to open it in StatCrunch, it's a little bit handy to do that here. So when I open this in StatCrunch, it just automatically filled in all of this. So then I go Stat, Regression, and then Simple Linear Regression. Okay, I know it's got the arrow there, but that's not the one I selected. I did Simple Linear Regression. When I click that, then I get a menu that looks kind of like this. As I said before, there's a lot of stuff here, but you don't have to fill it all in. Because all we're really wanting to do is find the prediction. Now we can in, fill in some things. If you fill in this, which comes from the drop down, and you fill in this one, again, comes from the drop down, and because that was the heading of my column one and column two, it did automatically import that. Then the next thing I filled in was because I wanted a prediction, I went down here to the bottom, and I said, predict it when the X value is 3,000 and the confidence level is 95%. That confidence level is the complement 
of the significance level. So if this is 5%, that is 95%. So those are the things that I filled in. And then I told it to compute. This is the result, okay? After you click compute, you get a lot of information here. It does tell you when you do this what R is. So you can use this to find your R also. It also gives you a regression equation. For this particular problem, I was interested in the regression equation and then the prediction of what I would get when I plugged that in. However, it is worthwhile to note that when you do this, you can also get your correlation coefficient. This value is your intercept because you know we have this in B sub zero plus B sub one times X and the chirps is actually the X value right there. So you see that information here also. So our prediction when it's 3000 chirps per minute <laughs> is that it's 152.9. Now to get what that was measured in, I kind of need to go back and actually see what it said here. 150 whatever degrees Fahrenheit. That's why it said what is wrong with this prediction. What is wrong with this prediction besides our fact that we just know we're not going to get, we're not going to have bugs chirping really a lot at 153 degrees is right here. The value of 3000 is far beyond the scope of the data. So we never should really try to do this. Going back again on our original data, the chirps only went up to 1,156. So 3,000 is way out there past that. It's like almost three times as much. So it's too far out for us to get a good prediction. So we should not have used this for the model. If we really wanted to make uh, our best prediction, our best prediction would be to just take those Y values right here, the temperatures, and find the average of those temperatures. How would we find just the average of those temperatures? Well, if you wanted to know just the average of the temperatures, or the mean of the temperatures, then you just use summary stats on that column. Now, if you have any trouble, you can just take the information out of this column if you want to, or when you go into summary stats, you can tell it what column to pull information from. But this is our Y column, and so our Y, um, y bar, which is the mean of that Y column, is the best predictor. Okay, so we can calculate it even if it's not really what we should use. This is just what I was saying. You really should only use the regression model if it's a good model. You determine if it's a good model if R indicates there is a linear correlation, if the regression model actually shows that it does fit the, all the points pretty well, because for us to do that regression model, we had to have really no outliers. But then our other thing to check on is that we're not far beyond the scope. So how to tell if it's a good model? One more time, that was right here. You wanna make sure that you're not far beyond the scope. And that's really all we have to do on this particular lesson. So as we've gotten further into the material, actually I think you'll, you're seeing that some of the homework is getting shorter because we're not really trying to bring everybody up to research level statistics. I'm not there. Get in touch with me if you have any questions.